From Reynolds Coliseum and K. Yao Court here at NC State University, we are ready for game number two here in round one at Reynolds. The Chattanooga Mox, SoCon champs, set to take on the NC State Wolfpack. We are just a couple of moments away from the opening tip, and NC State has done it this season. Steffi Sorensen with balance. Absolutely, and, and this is the secret to success for NC State is their balance across the board, Eric. In the ACC tournament where they got to the championship game, they didn't have the same balance. It was only one player averaging double figures. So I think moving forward, you play through uh, River Baldwin and you let the guards go to work. They're going to have to ultimately hit some shots here at their home floor. Westmore's team, 27 wins on the season, 13 coming in conference play. You take a look at the starting lineups presented by Capital One. Fort Chattanooga, 28 and 4 on the season. Sigrun Olafstadter is outstanding defensively. Addie Grace Porter at the point. Jada Gwynn, the SoCon tournament most outstanding player, has gone for 30 or more in each of the last two games. And Raven Thompson, number two scorer for this team. NC State's fans turning out, and they are loud. Here we go. The winner to take on Tennessee. And the opening tip is controlled by NC State in their home whites. Sonia Rivers at the point, excellent defensively, looking inside for River Baldwin as they swing it around for Mimi Collins. Back out top, James will launch. Can't hit the three, tracking down the loose ball. Unable to save it is River Baldwin, and here comes Jada Gwynn. Carson Murphy rattles it in for three. Great start for UTC. Collins will try a three. Nope. Rebound for the box. Addie Grace Porter will slow things down. Oh, head coach Sean Poppy was going to come out and tackle her. To he, he gets his steps in. He, he he's got a ton of energy, guy. the Mox head coach. Off the miss, here is Rivers. Back for Hayes. Collins. Another three on the way. Off the mark, and Addie Grace Porter has the rebound. How about styles in this game, Steffi? How do you think this one's going to play out? Well, I, you know, for NC State, they definitely played through their 6-5 post player, River Baldwin. V very effective when they played through her. The guards have got to hit shots. And the ACC tournament shot around 17% from the three-point line. You can see early the mocks daring NC State from the three-point line, telling them, hey, you've got to hit some outside shots to beat us. Five on the shot clock. Here comes Gwynn, averaging just under 20 points a game. Murphy open look for three. Couldn't get it. That's one thing that Sean Poppy said. He thought Carson Murphy was going to get open looks. And she's had a couple of open ones here in the early going. Has made one of two. That's Baldwin keeping it alive. James, no. NC State cold so far here on their home floor. 0 for 5 for NC State. Porter. Thompson on the pull-up. Rebound for Sanaya Rivers. You can see both teams looking to play fast. Collins, <laughs> good heads up. I'm going to make that catch. Not sure she was paying attention, but I'd like to see uh, NC State at least give River Baldwin a touch. And now she's trying to screen, and now she's looking to post. Another three on the way. This one is good. Sanaya Rivers Gets NC State on the board. At the end of the day, we were talking, we were talking to West Moore yesterday. They got to make shots, and they do perform significantly better here at home. They shot 35% against Notre Dame in the ACC championship game. They struggled against the Notre Dame zone for long stretches in that game. Chattanooga is not a zone team. They can move it on offense, and Olaf Stoddard on the back cut for two. Here's a touch for Baldwin. Gets it back and on the turnaround, she's short. 
And once again, the Mox not interested in pushing this time. They'll walk it up. Opening minutes here in Raleigh. Another open look for Murphy. Yeah, they're, they're just trying to bring out River Bowlin to defend on the perimeter. So Murphy at that five position, granted she's undersized, she's going to take some of those top of the key threes. Hayes off the mark. Good the box on the glass yeah, right Mark's now. doing a good job, Steffi, on the glass so far. NC State is now one for eight from the field. Wynn's going to need a lot of respect. She can fill it up in a hurry for the box. Here she is, defended by Hayes. Here's Porter with five on the shot clock. And stepping out of bounds in the turnover for the box. They do not turn it over very much. Sean Poppy's team turned it over a grand total of three times in the SoCon Championship game against UNC Greensboro. No doubt he brings energy. Um, he loves building relationships, chemistry with his players. They all have a significant amount of trust in him. I mean, I thought, Eric, you, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Their practice, high energy, very loud, music playing. Kids, his three kids everywhere on the court. It was awesome to see. I, I think just watching Sean on television and now in person and in practice, the energy that the team has, if they get half of what he has during the game, they're in a pretty good place. It's a shot of his son, Kai, eight years old, asked him about his dad. He said, he's funny, I guess. <laughs> That's high praise Come for on. an eight-year-old right Put there. Put up for your dad. I, guess, I mean, the I guess qualifier has to be there. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Cold shooting so far. Gwynn tracks it down for the Mox. Hannah Cohn is into the game right now. She wears number two. She is an elite shooter. She's at the top of the screen. NC State cannot lose sight of her. She will launch from everywhere, and as of late, she's made from everywhere. Kaylin Farrell also into the game. Tipped into the backcourt, picked up by Hayes. Hayes to the basket, and one. The crowd was just waiting to make a little noise. Madison Hayes supplies it. Timeout on the floor. And it's even at five. It is the fourth meeting all time between the Wolfpack and the Mox. The Wolfpack won the three previous meetings by an average of 23 points. But Sean Poppy's team this year, they've been in games all season long. Just four losses, all by single digits, all by five points or less. That's fueling the run brought to you by Wendy's. They expect to be competitive again here today against an NC State team that comes in ranked 11th in the AP poll. The only other team to go undefeated on the road this year, South Carolina. Yes. Good company to be in. Hayes finishes off the three-point play. The foul was on Cone for UTC. And NC State in front. Farrell looks for Cone. They get an open look for her. And a foul is called on NC State as Gwynn got knocked over, setting the screen. Madison Hayes was trying to call Brooks to switch. He's got jammed up there. Great screen by Jada Gwynn. Tori Brooks, the freshman, who will play some point. Saniya Rivers is been in that spot primarily. They have got to know where Hannah Cohn is. I mean, she has hit 67 threes. I don't know if I saw a single three where she takes a dribble. I mean, she is catch and shoot, and she will bury it. Seven on the shot clock, Thompson. Driving the lane off the mark from the freshman, Kaya Eli Salvez. Into the game for the Mox. Rivers showing her speed in a hard fall and a foul called on Thompson. The speed of Sonia Rivers in transition is so difficult to stop. Thompson tries to get there, just can't. Not quick enough there to beat Rivers to the squad. Really impressed with Sonia Rivers. We had a great conversation with her and Isaiah James yesterday. Rivers at the free throw line. Good on the first. 
For the fourth straight year, every NCAA Women's Championship game is on the networks of ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. So many great games today. UConn's playing now, Notre Dame and Hannon Hidalgo, a team that ended NC State's run in the ACC tournament in the championship game. Iowa coming up with Caitlin Clark, top of the hour. Juju and USC this afternoon on ESPN. And that's just before the sun sets. <laughs> Wind comes up short, and the rebound for Hayes. Brooks. Brooks would take for two. Highest recruit to sign with NC State. She has been a burst of energy off the bench. Instant offense makes great decisions, especially in that point guard position. This is a 7 nothing burst for NC State to go on top by five. There is Cone just off the mark. And here come the Wolfpack. Brooks. Hayes splits defenders for two. Nine nothing run. Thompson got a good mid range game and shows it off there. Number two scored 14 points a game. Freshman of the year in the SOCON. Last season, first team all conference this season. Sophomore from Atlanta. Rooks off the mark for three. Tip to the hands of Collins. Second chance for NC State. Yeah, rebounding is going to be a concern for Sean Coffey. A good D. That's Thompson with a clean strip. Thompson. Fouled on the drive. Raven Thompson making it happen on the defensive end, but let's take it back. A previous trip, Madison Hayes. Yeah, Madison Hayes, such a glue player for NC State. Does all the little things, sets screens, plays D, can get to the rim. And Raven Thompson, terrific strip. Great body control on the other side of the floor to draw the foul. Send herself to the free throw line. Valak Collins, her first. Raven outstanding free throw shooter, 80% was 7 for 7 from the free throw line in that SOCON title game. That was March 10th in Asheville, nine point win for Chattanooga over UNC Greensboro. Jada Gwynn went for 32. Sean Poppy's team did not trail in the second half. Their 20th SOCON tournament title in their 20th title game appearance. Let me say that again, 20 and 0 in tournament championship Ooh, games. It's getting it done. First time winning back-to-back -back SOCON titles since they won five in a row from 2013 to 2017. Thompson got that quick release, can't get it to go, and she just picked up an unnecessary second foul. See how Sean Poppy wants to play it. He'll leave Thompson out there, or he'll go to the bench. Two fouls in the first quarter, you would think she'd have to come to the bench, and she will. Well, Jada Gwynn, their leading scorer, I mean, almost 19 and a half a game. Zero points right now, down by three. The staff right now kind of talking to her, maybe settle her down just a little bit as she adjusts to the physicality, the length of the perimeter players for NC State. There's Baldwin. That's <laughs> just UTC great size. was small to begin with, but now look at the five on the floor right now. They've gone even smaller here, and River Baldwin taking advantage, and she's fouled. I mean, they're small, and then there's this lineup right now where Carson Murphy is playing the five, it looks like. <laughs> everywhere, everywhere you look. So can the speed top the size here? They're going to play the gaps. Yep. 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 And the defensive plan coming into this game is helping off a little bit. Could have been a foul there on River Ball run. Looked like she had an arm locked and there was nothing called. All 
Willis daughter. Cone. Three on the shot clock. Open look, the kick, the three on the way. A little too strong from Olaf's daughter. Brooks for Baldwin. Man, you got to give it to me. They tried to, and then a foul is called on the box. Well, so far in the early going in this game, half the field goal attempts for NC State have been threes, which I think Chattanooga is fine with. Up one. NC State's got that huge size advantage. And two, remember NC State last time out, they were three of 17 yeah. in the ACC championship game against Notre Dame. And that's why I was saying, even if the mocks are, are digging in on the post, you, you got to at least give a post entry pass because they're right now. That's it, they're, they're doing exactly what Chattanooga wants them to do, which is settle for outside shots. Foul on Ola's daughter, her first personal. Mimi Collins at the free throw line. Today is her ninth NCAA tournament game, her second at NC State, played in six at Maryland, and one with Tennessee. Winner of this game takes on the Lady Balls. Olaf Stauder with the hands, all defensive team in the SOCON this year with the steal. Fourth turn for NC State. Final seconds of the quarter. Ellie Saldez. Gets one off just in time, and it almost dropped. And that will do it for a low-scoring first quarter. NC State on their home floor. Sellout crowd making some noise right from the very start. The Mox hanging tough after one. It's a four-point game here in Raleigh. Back to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. One quarter in the books. It's a four point lead for NC State over Kai Poppies. Chattanooga Mox, the eight year old son of head coach Sean Poppy and his wife Regina. You know what? I, I'm, let's, we're calling it Steffi. He is our Xfinity most reliable player brought to you by Xfinity because he has more than one job, but he does them all well. Look, look at the detail. He, he gets the chair out. He knows he's on stool duty. Hey, Kai, need a little, maybe a little more pep in the step, right? But he fueled up on gum. He's ready to go. He was rebounding shots for the players yesterday. Um, just having a great time on the court. Good start to the quarter on the back cut for two. Ellie Saldez, her first points. By the way, if there's any doubt if Kai was going to be on the bench or not, it was erased in the regular season. The Mox won, lost one conference game. That's Maddie Cox getting into the game and wasting no time and knocking down the three. Kai was up with his buddies in one of the games this year. It was the only conference game that the Mox lost, so it's like, Kai, you're going to be on the bench the rest of the way here. <laughs> We need your mojo on the bench. He gets to watch his dad coach. I mean, his role model, I just think it's awesome. Our daughter launches for three. She's made 40 on the season. Well, Kai's going to lock in right now. Two sticks of gum in. Things unfolding right in front of him. Porter gets the rebounds. Checking out the Jumbotron, seeing if he's on. In the crouch. He looks like a coach right oh, now. His dad in. is crouched down, too. He is doing his dad's look. Oh, the frustration after the miss. Oh, Kai. Future in coaching. Skipping over, another three on the way. In and out, off the miss by Hayes. Chattanooga's got to do something, Eric, to get Jada Gwynn going. She's got three attempts. She's their leading scorer. She was the most outstanding player in the conference tournament. She's a playmaker. She's got experience in this NCAA tournament. That's her with the basketball right now for the Mox. Side and a block by Collins, just one on the shot clock. 
for Chattanooga. Jada Gwynn, fifth year grad from Oak Ridge, Tennessee, who had great success with Tennessee Tech the last four years. She was the MVP of the OVC tournament last year. Tech won in the first four of the NCAAs last season before losing to Indiana. So she has tournament experience. They need to get her going, as you say. Good launch as the shot clock expires just off the mark. And here comes NC State after the miss by Cone. Another three point attempt. Porter picks it up as Cox tried to save it. Kick out to Cone. Defended by Brooks. And here is Gwynn. Porter. Back out top to Gwynn. Olaf Stauder launches for three. Caught the front iron. Both teams struggling from outside the three-point line. Chattanooga one for eight. NC State two for ten. Sean Poppy said, if you see us playing zone, it means we drew it up in a huddle during a timeout. That's Brooks with a shot. But you may call that man-to-man, -man, but it looked like they were sitting in the zone that yeah. trip. Olive's daughter shut up by Cox. Not a lot of more south movement a lot of just passing along the perimeter some of the guards are going to have to take some dribbles get into the paint that's how you get it done win passes up the three this is where her game is a little mid-range off one leg knocks it in for her first two well you knew it would be a challenge for chattanooga nc state so good defensively collins another three on the way i think chattanooga is happy with the shot selection yeah. for nc state on one end and it's going to be a battle offensively for the mocks because westmore's team so good defensively number one in the acc in field goal percentage defense especially in the month of march all their numbers have been better yes. and this is a team coming together at the right time and there's a four of their last five. That three is no good. Brooks with the rebound. John Poppy wanted an extra pass. He did not want Murphy to settle for that three. Because it's going to be there. I mean, obviously, teams are letting each other shoot from three point. Cox looks inside, and Collins is fouled. NC State scoring defense number two in the ACC, 60 points a game. They held Notre Dame to 36% from the field. And this is a team we saw Green Bay earlier today. NC State does an excellent job of defending without fouling. Fifth in Division I and fewest fouls per game. Think about some of the height along the perimeter and Sanaya Rivers, 6 1. You got Isaiah James, 5 9, but terrific wingspan. Mimi Collins, 6'3", River Baldwin, 6'5". I mean, they, they defend well as a team, 1 through 5. Collins checks out. Baldwin's into the game. That was the thing that Chattanooga was concerned about on this end of the floor, going against North Carolina State's length. Win on a three-point shooter, attempted just 22 on the season. She's found her points like this. Getting in the paints, getting knocked down, and getting to the free throw line. She will shoot two when we come back to Raleigh. Seven-point game. Both scoring game so far between two good defensive teams, NC State and Chattanooga. Seven-point lead for the Wolfpack, coached by Wes Moore. We take a look at your need to know, brought to you by Dick Sporting Goods. Wes had great success. At Chattanooga, as we all know, one of his top memories was beating Tennessee in his final season as Chattanooga head coach. They had a win in the NCAA tournament against Rutgers. Cappy Pondexter and Chelsea Newton were on that team. 26 season overall as a head coach. He spent 15 seasons at UTC. We asked him about it yesterday, and he said,
Great city, great people. They had great wins. He pointed out the Rutgers win. Of course, Chattanooga beating Tennessee. That's going to be big news, and that was a, a big win. There's a whole connection with Kelly and John Harper, who are Tennessee head coach and assistant coach right now, that could be a big storyline on Monday if NC State wins, but he had great success at Chattanooga, great feelings, great memories, and now having great success at NC State and coaching against the team that he used to coach for. Eric, I thought what was so impressive, his ability to re recall things from however many years ago what was such great detail of fouls and uh, points made. I mean, it was just awesome for him to reflect. Obviously, just a terrific coach. Players love him. It was a good, it was a good example of coaches do remember the good times most coaches we've talked to have a photographic memory of the bad things that <laughs> happened to them somewhere along the line but nothing but good things for west talking about his time in chattanooga and really pleased to see what chattanooga's done under sean poppy in his second season of course sean was an assistant to kenny brooks after virginia tech for six years, so Virginia Tech and NC State going head to head through the years in the ACC. Here's Gwynn on the turnaround. Good defense by a good defensive player, Sanaya Rivers. Lacey Steele, the freshman from Edmond, Oklahoma, into the game, wearing number 24. And a three-second call on Baldwin. I think the Chattanooga bench had an assist on that one. I can hear more than one voice shouting out three. Certainly the game plan, though, to pack the paint. And try to control the tempo as best they can here against NC State. And this is a great matchup between Gwen and Rivers. Rivers. Excellent defender for Westmore. Gwen had a great conference tournament. Ooh. Murphy trying to take it at River Baldwin, but the six foot five Baldwin would have none of it. Came into this NCAA tournament with a team high 38 blocks on the season. One of the best two at taking charges. And at six foot five, hey, I got a lot of respect. Willing to throw your body around and take some charges. I know our teammates do as well. Turnover for the Mox, picked up by Steele. Rivers. They do get into the Baldwin, and Baldwin will head to the free throw line, looking for her first points of the game. Seems sort of odd to say for someone who's averaging 10 and a half points a game, went for 14, a team high against Notre Dame, but hasn't scored here today. Got that big size advantage for NC State, but they have been unable to find her consistently so far. Second one to come, NCAA Men's Basketball Championship. Second round continues today on CBS, TBS, TNT. For more information on tournament game times and networks, go to NCAA.com. Of course, the fans here in Raleigh thrilled that they can root on their NC State women this afternoon in person and then watch the NC State men play for a spot in the Sweet 16 as they take on Oakland tonight. NC State with the victory over Texas Tech in round one. Cone still trying to find the mark from three. Second chance here, Olaf's daughter with the rebound. It is a defensive battle right now. Turnover number four for Chattanooga. NC State hasn't made a field goal in the last four and a half minutes. Chattanooga hasn't scored in the last two and a half minutes. James has been held in check so far. Rivers for three. Another three-pointer off the mark, but Baldwin's got the putback. Timeout called by Chattanooga as NC State has had to work hard to have their largest lead of the game. Up by eight inside of two to go in the second. Smiles now after the victory over Green Bay. Very impressive offensive performance.
They were locked in on defense, and they will take on the winner of this game Monday here in Raleigh. Maybe a little reminiscing for Kelly Harper. She was the coach previously here at NC State, back in the building. Kelly and John were assistants for Westmore in Chattanooga during his time at UTC. There's a deep three. Cohen still trying to find the mark here today. NC State has outscored UTC 10-6 here in this second quarter inside of 90 seconds to go, and that's going to be a foul on Cohn. Knocking down James. I do feel like Chattanooga has has missed Raven Thompson's presence. I know she's only 5'10, but she's got experience in this system. She brings some physicality, can get some rebounds. She's tough to, offensively for them. They're definitely missing her out on the floor with her picking up those two fouls. Cone with two as well, Steffi. And Murphy with two. Let's get Davis into the game for the box. NC State 28% from the field. The box 20% from the field. Win. Trying to take the freshman with the left. Jada Gwynn now a six. Leading the box in scoring. Hayes. Baldwin trying to post up against Davis. Davis fighting inside and gets called for the foul. Well, this is what Ch Chattanooga's got to do offensively is get the ball to your primary bl uh, playmaker, and that's Jada Gwynn there with the kiss off the glass. She's crafty around the rim. She uses her size to her advantage at times where she's able to just make something out of nothing. Did you get the Jada kiss reference? Come on. I'm with you. Okay, thank I got you. you. I got you. You are grilling me about the band earlier, so I was trying to throw a throwback for you. I appreciate that. Tia Davis picked up a foul. Her first, she'll head to the bench. And now NC State will pressure here to make the mocks work for it in the final minute of the first half. Ellie Saldez, they got to get it across half court. They do not. 10 second violation, turnover number five, and Westmore says hold for one. What a play call by Westmore. Relying on your defense at the end of this quarter to get you a turnover. Rivers nods her head, goes to work. Five seconds. Rivers on the turnaround. Beautiful shot. Sanaya Rivers. And that's how the first half comes to a close. And the crowd loves it here in Raleigh. Rivers, 6-1, the junior, ice cold. Welcome back to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. Largest lead of the game for West Morris team, nine. They've been unable to pull away from Chattanooga. The mocks know they are still in this one. Let's take you into their locker room. Head coach Sean Poppy just a moment ago. When we walk out of here, we have confidence. My gosh, we're down nine and we play bad offensively. Right, or are we happy to be down down nine and we're going to go out here and they're going to go on a 6 8 0 run and we're done? No. Right, it's a decision. Yeah. Right, and it's all between here. Mm -hmm. Our confidence level, our togetherness, our energy level, mm -hmm. are we willing to do the little stuff, whatever that may be? Mm -hmm. Am I going to be a great screener? Am I going to be a great passer? Am I going to be a great cutter? Mm -hmm. right, and when I get that thing, am I going to shoot that darn thing with some confidence? Yeah. You guys got it? Yeah. yeah. Let's go. Let's go. It's all about the confidence as we check out the game track brought to you by Invesco QQQ. Cold shooting for both teams. Two very good defensive teams. There were some droughts, but 
the confidence word thrown out there, and that's what has to help carry UTC here as we start in the third quarter. Yeah, and, and I think Raven Thompson coming back into the lineup, she had two early fouls in that first quarter. She's a player that can lead this team. She can defend. She can score. I saw one of her teammates kind of encouraging her, hey, let's get this third quarter. So I'm curious if Sean Poppy got him riled up at the half. Can they, can they mount a comeback here? Thompson had four points before leaving with two fouls in the first quarter. And the shot clock not working at the moment, so that's why we get an early whistle. There you see Raven, the sophomore, second on the team in scoring at 14 points a game. Jada Gwynn at nearly 20 points a game had six first half points. And we showed you UTC shot 23% in the first half. And NC State didn't get that nine point lead until right before the end of the second quarter. So you see Ed Sidlaski and Karen Prieto is out there, but Angelica Suffren, who was our official in game one, is now out there for game two. So Tommy Paris, who was out there in game one, unable to go here in the second half. We hope for the very best. We haven't gotten a report or anything, but they do bring four officials. They dress four officials for tournament games, and they have the alternate official and Suffren called game one. James trying to get going. That's a good start. Isaiah was 0 for 4 from the field, did not score in the first half. Team's leading score at nearly 16 points a game. There is Thompson wasting no time getting her going, Steffi. She looked confident from the start, and I think that her going to the bench maybe brought the team, you know, obviously it stalled their offense just a little bit, so no surprise they go right back to Thompson. He's crafty around the rim. And the Baldwin. Baldwin on the turnaround, no. The follow is knocked away, and last touched by UTC. It'll be NC State basketball. Rivers. And a foul is going to be called. It's Thompson. And that's three. And Sean Poppy's got to ride with her now, don't you? Yeah, I, you don't want NC State to pick up any more of a lead. And Porter gets called for the grab on Hayes, so back-to-back -back quickies here. That's two on Porter. Rivers. Gets it back from the outside. James will launch another three. Collins swatted it away, and it'll be Mox basketball. Addie Grace Porter suffered an ankle injury in the SoCon quarterfinal. Wasn't about to miss any time. Had an ankle brace on and didn't fit in her shoe. So they went out and fought, found a bigger shoe for her. That's that kick sporting goods, apparently, to just <laughs> make sure she can keep playing. And a trip to the free throw line coming for the box right here. That's a gamer right there. Yeah, I mean, there's a reason why Sean Poppy calls Addie Grace Porter his, his, his ride or die. And, you know, she stuck around when he took the job. Her first season as a freshman, they went 7-23. and Then he arrives. He's trying to sell her on this pitch. Hey, we're going to start winning. And then she's like, are you sure we only won seven games last year? And then... Slowly but surely got the confidence and it spread like wildfire within this program and here they are in the NCAA tournament. For a second consecutive year under Poppy. Thompson one of two. The foul on Collins. Her second. James skips it over Rivers. Collins trying to post up Thompson out there with the three fouls. Rivers a little too strong, and there is Addie Grace Porter with the rebound.
Olaf's daughter thought there'd be a roll to the basket. There was not. It's a turnover for the Mox. We're going to post up Collins again. Thompson there defensively. Rivers shut off by Olaf's daughter on the turnaround for two. That's her game. I mean, people really got to know Sonia Rivers when she dropped 33 on UConn earlier in the year. It's been her first year at South Carolina playing under Don Staley. Comes to NC State playing the point guard position. How about the rip? Porter gives the foul. Thought she had all ball, but Rivers scoring on one end and getting the steal on the other. Loves the mid-range, the athleticism, the height, the skill. Makes it look easy. Great anticipation, great hands, too. How about the smile? Was she going to throw it down? I mean, they were throwing up to her in, in, in pregame. Fifth NCAA tournament game for the junior from Wilmington. Played in three with South Carolina in the 2022 tourney, including against Connecticut in the title game win for the Gamecocks. Sixth player of the year in the ACC last year. First team all-conference and all-defensive team this year. And an honorable mention All-American. She's got 10. Here's some pressure from the Wolfpack. Thompson. That's usually her shot. Won't miss too many of those. Saldo's back on the floor for the box. They'll give ball in that shot. Hayes fouled by Gwynn on the box out. I just love Madison Hayes' game. She just brings so many intangibles, right? You think kind of the showtime factor of Sanai Rivers and James. But Madison Hayes just does a little bit of everything. Collins on the turnaround for two. Five for Collins. Rivers the only member of the Wolfpack in double figures with ten. Win. Tough shot. Rivers with the push. James thought about it. Rivers thought about it as well. And continue to look inside, but now Hayes will launch from deep. Baldwin just reaches over the top of Murphy for the rebound. And a blocking foul is going to be called on Kaya Elisaldez. Feel like a greater sense of urgency, Eric, in this in this third quarter from NC State, moving the ball around, getting to the shots that they want. Sonia Rivers making her presence felt as I James hitting shots, getting the ball down low to River Baldwin. Everybody kind of getting on the action, the balance that we're accustomed to seeing from the Wolfpack. 546 to go to the third quarter. The mocks over the limit, so free throws the rest of the way here in the quarter for the Wolfpack. A reminder, for the fourth straight year, every NCAA Women's Championship game is on the networks of ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com. You're home for all 90 NCAA championships. Caitlin Clark playing right now. Slow start for her. Holy Cross hanging tough with Iowa. They were within two at the end of the first quarter. Here's Rivers. Steal. Can't score. Olaf started with the rebound. Win. Can't get it to drop. Baldwin has the board. Hands it off to Hayes. That's nine rebounds for River Baldwin. Hayes has Baldwin on her left. Finds her, and Baldwin finds the bucket. Timeout called by Chattanooga. NC State building momentum here on their home floor, up by 17 in the third.
Sanaya Rivers lighting it up here in the second half. She has been everywhere from the three-point line. Her mid-range game is so good. Turn around, fade away, book it. This is a first-team All-ACC player coming alive here in Reynolds Coliseum. Leading the way for NC State with 11 points, go along with four rebounds and an assist, and she's been her usual disruptive self on the defensive end as well. I think she was frustrated with herself for missing the layups because she had two steals, two breakaways, and didn't convert. I know she wants to get that back, but didn't foul, didn't make any unnecessary mistakes on the other end of the floor, just playing disciplined defense. Going back into the basketball game. I believe Ellie Saldez realized that she had an open look. She was looking to be a distributor. Five on the shot clock here. Trouble for Thompson and the box, but Thompson made something out of nothing, just couldn't get it to drop. NC State has done such a great job at just limiting the windows of opportunities for the Mox offensively. Just, if there's a shot, you're gonna have to take it if you're Chattanooga because NC State is so long and quick defensively. They cover their spots. Baldwin is fouled by Davis and she'll go to the line to shoot two. But first, we have a timeout with 4.03 to go in the third quarter here at Reynolds. As we take a look at Geico Get More, brought to you by Geico, South Carolina, 105 wins in our last 108 games, including perfect so far this season. Look a little bit different against North Carolina as they'll have Camilla Cardoso. And Bree Hall back. Bree Hall back in the starting lineup. But even with those two out of the lineup in their last game, Chloe Kitts goes for 21 on nine of nine shooting. So there's always someone who's ready to take the lead role for South Carolina. I think Paul Wiley is just playing so well for Don Staley. I mean, she gets in there 17, 18 minutes, gets her shots in, so efficient, so impressed with her growth. Jada Gwynn on the pull-up, a little too strong in the rebounds for Hayes. So many great games tomorrow. I mean, the defending national champions, Kim Mulkey was not happy say the yesterday. Least. So usually when Kim is not happy, there's a pretty positive response the next day. We'll see what they do against Middle Tennessee. Middle Tennessee, of course, was down 18, and they came back to knock off Louisville. There's a whistle and a foul, and a couple of more free throws coming up for NC State. And the lineup on ESPN alone, Duke, Ohio State. That's a great matchup. Colorado, I mean, the Pac-12 is trying to get as many teams as deep into the tournament as possible, and they have the firepower to do it. They're taking on Kansas State. Nebraska held off Texas A&M yesterday. They'll take it on Oregon State, which is an outstanding team, having an outstanding year. Alabama knocked Florida State out of the tournament. They'll take on Texas. Texas was so impressive in, the in their, that's right, but in the Big 12 Tournament Championship game, so impressive against Iowa State. Baylor and Virginia Tech, that's another good one. And then Iowa State and Stanford, of course, Stanford the number two seed in this regional four in Portland. There's Chattanooga finally getting something going from the outside, closing it on three minutes to go. That was a deep two to make it a 19-point game. So we'll be busy a little bit tomorrow practices, but we've got a lot of games to watch. Yeah, games. Fans. Yes, fans work first, fans a close, like 1A. Jada Gwynn trying to work her way through traffic. Shot clock at 10. Kelly Saldez. Off for Davis. Or two. It's going to be stops and scores for the Mox. Finish out this two minutes. Two and a half to go in this third quarter. They can put three or four stops with the score. Get some confidence. Chip away this lead heading into the fourth. They've been outscored 15-7 here in the third, so they need to pile up some more stops here. Zoe Brooks kicks it to Hayes. Hayes, no good on the three, but flying in to get the rebound is James. Second chance here for the Wolfpack. Yeah. 
Brooks can't get the three. That's got to be over the back. Yeah. Chattanooga's been calling for it all day. Baldwin's got a long reach, but that time it looked like she reached pretty far down, but nothing called. We play on. Win on the run. No. And rebound for Hayes. Looked like Rivers was about to turn it over, but a foul is called on Davis. So Davis will come out of the game. River Baldwin will head to the free throw line for NC State. Legendary coach at Ithaca College, football coach Jim Butterfield would call games like this a taffy pole. But he had this thick main accent, so it'd be, it's a taffy pole out there. That's what this, a taffy pole, rock fight, you name rock it. Rock fight, okay. Yes, That's a more, a more contemporary turns. turn, yes. I'll, I'll give you rock <laughs> fight, Steffi. There's Cone launching for her first three. She had the deep two earlier. That's not Poppy. That's just not the shot. I mean, I understand Hannah Cone wants to get going. Rivers will head to the free throw line. Free throw attempts continue to pile up for NC State. This will be attempts number 22 and 23 for the Wolfpack. Chattanooga has attempted six free throws today. Most importantly, though, for Chattanooga, they are one for 12 from outside the three-point line. Great crowd here at Reynolds Coliseum, as we've come to expect. They sold out very quickly. 5,500 here in this building. And it's a celebration of basketball today. They've got NC State, the women playing right now, the men playing this evening against Oakland. With a trip to the Sweet 16 on the line. I think Wes Moore has too much to do to get to Pittsburgh in time to root on his friend Kevin Keyes and NC State. He got to Washington to see the ACC championship game when NC State met closed yeah. out their fantastic yeah. run of five wins in as many days. Yeah. He hitched a private jet to get there in Washington, flew back with the team. But I think Wes has got some film to watch after today. He'll have that NC State men's game on in the background, though, I would assume. Everybody in this arena is going to have that game on. What a run for them in March. Zoe Brooks going off the dribble, slams on the brakes. Collins open three to beat the buzzer. Rivers gets a second chance, and that's off the mark. Hayes took a hard fall, a little bit slow to get up, but seems to be okay. That'll do it for the third quarter. NC State keeps it dialed up on defense, holding the box to just nine in the third. Up big, heading to the fourth. Of course. Some great memories of the great Kay Yao sprinkled throughout this building, paying tribute to her on the courts, in the rafters, and of course her legacy lives on here in this building with the play for K game. NC State beating Louisville this year in the play for K game. Sister, of course, on hand. Five hundred thousand dollars raised and donated to the Kay Yao Cancer Fund for that event that is a must-see every year here in this building. That's going off the mark. It'll be NC State basketball. Zoe Brooks across half court. It has been a poor shooting day for NC State. They are 3 of 19 from outside the three-point line. 29% overall from the field. They get a roll this time. James with seven all in the second half. Thompson. Up top to Gwynn. Gwynn. 
That's a familiar shot for her. Just can't get it to drop. Just now three a, of 12 from the field. She just had a tough day. And, you know, you have to credit the length of NC State guarding her. Some shots were accustomed to her knocking them down. Just not been dropping today. Collins back out to Rivers who walks. You can see the thought of like, okay, we haven't been very good from outside the three-point line. We're open for a reason in Westmore. Wants his team to drive the basket, use our size, and then when you get caught in between like that, not that you turned it over very often, you didn't pass up a shot, first of all. Well, you we let know. it go, right? <laughs> Gwynn trying to back in Sanaya Rivers. Polis daughter on the run, nope. And the rebound for Zoe Brooks. Maddie Cox back into the game. She'll launch for three. Brooks got a hand in there. Chattanooga keeps possession. Gwynn again can't get it to go on the run. That's the thing come tournament time, right? Steffi, the shots that you get, you've got to make sure you make them when you're going up against a team that you're giving up so much size to, you're giving up home court advantage to. You are big underdogs. James launches a three and drains it. So now James turning it up in the second half. She's in the double figures now with 10. It's, uh, it's their balance and it's starting to show Rivers, Brooks, Collins, James. Thompson gets the roll this time. Thompson. Thompson now with nine. Brooks on the pull up, no, and Thompson's got the rebound. She'll show her handle. Ooh. Tried to cross it by Zoe Brooks, who gets called for the reach in foul. Zaya James. Off the pass from Zoe Brooks, letting it go from the three-point line. Looked confident in that shot. We had such a great conversation with the junior. First team, all ACC. Great example of somebody waiting their turn. We got, some, we got some action going on right Shannon, now. Yeah, Chattanooga just got teed up. I don't. Sean Poppy was upset. I don't know if it was him. He definitely has been fired up here. And we just got confirmation from Angelica Suffer. The technical was to head coach Sean Poppy. So Mimi Collins to the free throw line to shoot the tees. Through three quarters, team fouls in this game. 18 for Chattanooga, four for NC State. I have a feeling that fueled that technical a little bit. I mean, definitely. There. I mean, there's been some questionable calls of some over back, over the back, and obviously, obviously the sizable margin for NC State versus the Mocs. At the same time, NC State is notorious for not fouling defensively, and that is their bread and butter. Is they defend you without fouling. But certainly for Sean Pop, you're trying to you're trying to fight for your team right now, get them, you know, a shot of adrenaline that they need. Say so wants his team to move. That's where they're going to find any open shots on offense. Keep moving, and it'll be a trip to the free throw line for Poppy's mocks. Collins picks up her third personal. Collins will check out. And Madison Hayes will come back into the game. Mox basketball on the baseline as Ellie Saldez will put it into play. I think Olaf's daughter had a little blood, so she had to get the right leg just below the knee taped up. And we're ready to go. Win. Little hesitation. Good finish by Jada Gwynn into double figures with 10. Hayes 
was slowed down. Got it off to James. Rivers back to Brooks. James for three. Visit that store we were talking about Isaiah James. We talked to her yesterday uh, just about how how different her approach was this year. I mean, everyone is looking to her to step up, lead this team, and she had a conversation with herself. You know, how how serious do I want to take this? How good do I want to be? And she has definitely challenged herself in the offseason, got in the gym, put in the work, and the numbers definitely show for themselves. More than double their scoring output from a year ago. There's Rivers, and now NC State trying to heat up. Well, as they close in on a meeting with Tennessee, it must feel good to the Wolfpack to finally see some three-point shots go down because you know you're going to need that against Tennessee's size on Monday. Shot clock down to five. Win. With the shot clock at two, she is fouled. It seems the foul She'll shoot two. I mean, there's been opportunities. It's just been a matter of the confidence to step up. Remember, we see, saw her in the previous possession. Snyder Rivers hesitated just a little bit there. Confident, in rhythm, stepped up, knocked it down. Valerie Collier, the freshman from Millington, Tennessee, will come into the game for NC State as Saniya Rivers heads to the bench. We think perhaps her day is done. Pretty good stat line all in all for Rivers. 16 points, 8 rebounds, and an assist. There's Jada Green at the free throw line. State was concerned about Gwynn and rightfully so. Last nine games before today, averaged 24 points a game, was shooting 58% from the field. Held to 10 here today on 4 14 shooting. Mox get a turnover. Here is Gwynn on the run. Hayes back defensively. Gwynn and one. Well done by Jada Gwynn. She'll go to the free throw line when we come back to Raleigh in the fourth. And one of the stars of today in NCAA basketball as we take a look at today's star stories brought to you by Honda Rakia Jackson at 26 points for Tennessee. Paige Becker's making a return to the NCAA tournament. 28 points, 11 rebounds, 7 assists in UConn's win over Jackson State. Yeah, Connecticut, three players that scored over 20 points. And you, you think about the Huskies and everything that I've been through, all the adversity, Leah Edwards breaking her nose in the Big East Conference tur Tournament Championship, and just what they fought through. We'll see how far Paige Beckers and Aliyah Edwards can go this year. In the ACC, Sonia Citron went for a game-high 29 points in Notre Dame's win over Kent State. Hannah Hidalgo had 14 points and 11 assists in that game. And added six steals. I always have to throw in Hannah Steals, of course. Two-way player. <laughs> inside of five minutes to go here in Raleigh. Steals got it for NC State and then threw it away. Mox basketball. Number one seed in this regional is Texas. They knocked off Drexel by 40. Madison Booker, another one of those amazing freshmen this year in NCAA basketball and 14 assists in that game. Stanford, the number two seed in this regional. They knocked off Norfolk State, Cameron Brink, Kiki Iriafa, and combined for 34 points and 24 rebounds. Three-pointer is good. Murphy started the scoring for the Mox. That's her first bucket since that first quarter hoop. Inside of four minutes to play, NC State closing in on a matchup with Tennessee in what will be an electric environment here on Monday. James. That's her fourth three-pointer. Things have gotten a lot better from outside the three-point line for NC State. They were two of 13 
in the first half. They are 5 of 12 in the second half. And James, as you see, has 16. Just look a little bit more confident, Eric, stepping up and just being ready on the cats to shoot it. Instead of hesitating, am I going to attack or am I going to shoot? If you're open, have the confidence to take the shot and make the shot. We've seen that from Isaiah James. She gets some loves from Sanaya Rivers. Madison Hayes checks out of the game. River Baldwin is done for the day as well. She has a double-double today, stepping 10 points and 11 rebounds for Baldwin, her seventh double-double of the season. Cox with the kick to Brooks. James will launch. Ton of confidence right now. Not afraid to take the three, but this is her game. Driving for the two. She's in the double figures now with 11. Grimm leading the way with 13 for the box. James wants it in the corner. She's just hot, but it's thrown away by Cox. Grace Porter on the drive and a nice finish tough. by Porter. First points for Porter. She does have eight rebounds. I will say that the pain points a lot closer than we expected. Rebounding is separated plus 19 for NC State. There's Lacey Steele for three. Thompson has the rebound. Cohn was never able to get things going from outside the three-point line on the drive. She has fouled 0 for 6 from outside the arc as NC State did all they could to stop her from beyond the arc. And there was no stopping Sanaya Rivers as she got going. It's our Capital One rewarding performance of the game. Doing it on both ends of the floor. 16 points, 8 rebounds, some steals, some assists, a little bit of everything from Sanaya Rivers, the 6'1 junior. So Rivers on the bench, and James has just joined her. James ended up with 19, and she had 14 of her 19 in the fourth quarter. Five threes of the eight made today for NC State. Jenna Aisa on the floor now for NC State. Lizzie Williamson on as well. Williamson tipped it, but to Cone. Ellie Saldez. One minute remaining. One and minute. there's a three. three point Hannah Cone finally gets oh. the three to drop. A little bit of a mouth finally as she turns <laughs> up court. Here's Brooks in the final minute. And NC State wants to empty the bench, so Westmore takes a timeout. Katie Penaweta will get into the game. So the season will come to a close for Chattanooga, just their fifth loss this year. This will end their five-game winning streak. Back-to-back -back SOCON champs. Sean Poppy in just his two years in Chattanooga has done a great job establishing the mocks as outstanding mid-major team. Now, Kid Davis was down for a moment. That's why they stopped play, but she's going to stay in the game. Sean, the SOCON coach of the year. Definitely building something. A already a, a, a program in Chattanooga that has is rich with history. And you think about Westmore, what he was able to do there. And 
just picking up right where we're known to associate Chattanooga with, which is getting into the NCAA tournament, conference tournament champions. I think Sean Poppy's the, a great coach and a great fit for the SOCON. And a block, but a foul will send Davis to the free throw line. So it will be NC State and Tennessee on Monday here in Raleigh. Wes Moore, of course, when he was coaching at Chattanooga. Kelly Harper, John Harper were on his coaching staff. Kelly Harper, of course, was a head coach here at NC State. You want subplots and storylines. We got them in this game. <laughs> I didn't want to start because we got it. We got oh, <laughs> well, the game's time to get over. there. We got plenty of time on Monday <laughs> to talk about it. Tennessee very impressive with their 92-63 win over Green Bay. Shot 58% from the field. NC State had to grind it out, but in the end, they win it big. 64-45, setting up a date with the Lady Vols here on Monday. State plays so well at home. Their 17th Street NCAA tournament win here. And I thought it was the balance. We, we had time. River Baldwin getting the double double. Rivers guarding. Her being able to facilitate the offense. And then Isaiah James. Man, coming alive in the fourth quarter. It was the balance again. What we associate with NC State that prevails today. Two teams that had disappointing endings in their conference tournaments hit the reset here in the NCAA tournament, and they set up a meeting here in the second round on Monday. Tennessee and NC State with a showdown that should be a great one. Great atmosphere here today. A sellout crowd will be here on Monday to see the Wolfpack take on the Lady Vols. For Steffi Sorensen and our crew, I'm Eric Free. Thanks for being with us. Now to L and the crew.